Uh, George will be up here in just a second. Um, maybe uh, Jerry knows. What's the date for summit? Sorry, I got something in my ear. The 23rd. Okay, so a um, couple, things, couple things to put on your schedule. Uh, we didn't have a summit in April, but we are having one in May. So it's the 23rd. So put that on your schedule for the 23rd. At the board. At the board. Okay. And so you'll see more stuff come out of that. But put that on your schedule. Um, and then we have the golf tournament. If, you were, if you're going to um, be part of that, sign-ups are happening now. I don't think there's any. June 18th. June 18th. And if anyone would like to donate any teams for our raffle, see Jennifer Morris or myself. Okay. Donate a team? like um, To donate items for our oh, raffle. Oh, donate. Drive. Oh, yeah. Okay. And, and so teams will put little baskets together and do different fun things. Okay. So we're needing that. You can even find um, Lisa for donations yes. to help. Yeah. So I was going to throw that out there too. That anybody, because there are some committees for the golf tournament, mm -hmm. and you know, there's only a couple of people trying to reach out to see if people. So any of you guys, if you have family members, friends, neighbors, something that you know they have a company that they would like to try to help some exposure and promote, definitely reach out to us and let us know. Maybe they'd be interested in raffling a prize or a gift certificate or something. So we would definitely like to help them more exposure with their company too, so let us know. And if we... Yeah, it's a good opportunity. Because you're gonna all be out there and you know, everyone wants an opportunity to win some fun. fun and we'll stuff. be reaching out to you individually for that as well, because we're getting everything together by the end of the month. Oh! So, yeah. Okay. That's the big thing. I'll turn the time over to you for Inspiro for just a second. Okay, for just a second. No. So, hi, yeah, I'm Lisa with Inspiro. Yes, there's a second. Bye. You got Happy May. <laughs> okay, there was my second. So, I'm Lisa with Inspiro. I think I've had the opportunity to meet the majority of you. There's a couple few new faces that I haven't had to meet. So, I'd love to, you know, if you're downstairs on the first floor, please come by and say hi. I honestly don't have a lot of stuff to tell you guys today about the market. The Fed is meeting at 2 o'clock Eastern time, so like in about an hour. We're not expecting much of a change at all. Rates are still where they're at. You should be receiving daily, the monthly, or kind of a, a daily um, interest rate. So we're still kind of looking in the mid sevens on conventional loans, low sevens for the government loans. We're, um, now we're kind of hearing that there could be maybe up to a bit, maybe a quarter change, but now they're saying fall. So everything's kind of getting pushed out, but again, we're not seeing much of a change, but you know, that's okay. It's, uh, we're getting, we're starting to see more buyers coming in to get pre-qualified. Again, I think people are starting to get used to it. Okay, it, you know what, the rates are, it is what it is, and you know, take advantage of it right now. And so we're down there, we can definitely help with different loan programs. We're still offering the loan program that um, one of our um, lenders, UWM, is offering that 4000 towards down payment. They're still offering that loan program. And so if you've got um, some buyers that are, you know, you'd like us to try to get pre-qualified, we can look at that. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to let you know. Um, other than that, obviously, um, you guys have heard about that we take agents out to UWM. If that's something that you're interested in, you've been hearing about it, maybe you've seen some pictures and you want to go, reach out to us and let us know because there's only really the five of us and we are starting to try to individually make phone calls to a lot of you guys but there's a lot of you so um, if we happen to miss you please come down and, and talk to us other than that I think that's probably it except for that we are trying to help out Brenda Lee also with the golf tournament um, and Sparrow definitely wants to support obviously Century 21 and the foundation with that so if we can um, Again, that's part of the phone calls we'll be making, besides introducing ourselves and, and introducing Inspiro, we'll kind of be reaching out about the golf tournament as well. So I think that could be about it. I don't have anything else really exciting to, to tell you guys this week. Any questions for anybody? No? Except for Happy May? That's it? Okay, well I know George was just wrapping up the Inspiro meeting, so he'll come up in a minute, so... Jeremy's going to sing well. I was just going to say, <laughs> I'll sing song. I'm going to say we got our rapper back there. Yeah, I'll rap or sing. Okay, come on, yes. I think it's rapping. Yeah, a rapper and sing. Rap. Like a free and dance. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah. Actually yeah. if you show up before we talk about the golf tournament at all, 
Yeah. Already done. Yeah, but that was being can start, by you these can start <laughs> signing up for golf now. Mm -hmm. So any golfers, and I think they've sent that notice out. Um, Chip all done and no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I get talking down there. Well, is George down there? He is down there, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, throwing. maybe someone can just, I send him a text to say, hurry. I do have a quick thought for everyone, if, if that's okay. Is it in rapture for Can I give a, uh, a quick moment before George comes up? Yes. Just a moment. Yes. Please, please. I, 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 here's what I want to talk about for just a second. This word. Urgency. So if you think for a moment about your current situation, just three or four things from the group, what are the biggest challenges you are experiencing right now in your business? And maybe not, you know, yeah, you can do the personal level of it, but just kind of like what is getting in the way of business right now? No one's in a hurry. Okay, so no urgency. urgency. No urgency, no urgency. Okay, what else? Interest rates. Interest rates. All the perception, the rates are gonna come down, so people are, it takes away urgency because they the, think the messaging, away. right? Yeah. Right, or the story. You guys, good luck reading my handwriting. People thinking that because of raids, that all happening, prices are going to come down, continuing. Yeah, but there's still people thinking there's going to be a housing crash. There's Future is better, right? It's all kind of just feeding into this thing. Mm -hmm. So, so here's what I want us to do this is a smart group of people with a lot of experience behind them here. Um, I want us to talk for just a second and help. I'm going to use, I don't like the word spin because I don't, that, that feels manipulative to me. But what I would love for us to do for just half a second here is think if there was a buyer right now, if there was a seller right now who was considering engaging in a real estate transaction, see, you've got two seconds. If there was a buyer or seller considering getting engaged in a real estate transaction, smart group of people here, what are the top three or four things that should be the messaging for creating urgency right now? Go ahead. Um, more pick up homes right now, but so you so you're finding something you actually want, not okay. just having to grab choice know, slash right. options. Okay. What else? No bidding wars. I mean, no multiple offers to worry about. Yeah, I'm gonna say no nonsense. Because that's kind of me. I'm a no nonsense kind of guy, right? You don't have to waive appraisal or do deals. Yes, I mean, guys, can you remember late? 2020, what would it have been? One. One, and then early 2022. Mm -hmm. That wasn't fun, right? It's it's basically ha going to happen again. It's almost a foregone conclusion that will happen again. Okay, two more things. Better negotiations. Yeah, right. ability to yeah. negotiate, right? So the buyer or seller, actually, I would even argue, you could kind of, on both of those. Anything else? As a seller, it actually, um, there may be more on the market, but there's not a lot. So as a seller, you really are getting good looks. Yeah, yeah. I think that kind of goes on into the options I, I yeah. hear. You can say that, I think from a buyer's perspective, right, maybe not as many opportunities, but there will there will be more in the future, which will do what to prices, right? <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna say this, um, guarantee, right? What is the guarantee right now? Well, it's, it's what's happening right now. So many people get so focused on the idea of what will the future opportunities be? What will I be handed? I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait, something's gonna be better. We don't know. And so what I've, I've often said to both buyers and sellers that has been really, it speaks to them, is this idea that the current circumstances is what is your guarantee. And if you're looking at making some crazy awesome investment for forever, then okay, we're, we're we're going down the wrong path. Let's focus on that. But if you're focused on accomplishing your dreams, your goals of home ownership, or whatever the dream of the seller might be, this is your guaranteed situation right now. Let's take action and let's get moving. Guys, that's a great group of stuff you just came up with. So let's get the nonsense stories out of our head that's being fed to people and focus on ways we can create urgency to current buyers and sellers. Sound good? Yeah, sounds great. Yeah. How about that for a warm up act, guys? That's great. That's great. Thank you, Jeremy. Right. It would have been more enjoyable in rap form, like you promised. I could do that again uh, one day. I will do that. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Awesome. Good to be with everybody. How's everybody doing today? Great. Good, Good morning. morning. Good morning. I started getting up here, but then I got stopped three different times, Ruby. In from the, I was, in fact, I, I walked to the restroom where I don't. Bono is all 
they're waiting for you. I'm like, well, all I'm going to be thinking about if I don't go to the bathroom is going to the bathroom. Yeah. So, all right. Well, okay, great to be with you guys. Uh, I'm going to move a little more over here. But uh, I'm, I'm excited to share some stuff with you. I'm hot off the golf courses of Scotland, um, which I love to go every year. In fact, I was thinking about, uh, where's Amy? I saw her walk in. There she is. I remember my flew from Lima, Peru over there to, to play uh, a little golf. And uh, that was, uh, I think that was the last time I was there, actually. No, that's, that's not true. I've been there one other time before that. So who's been to Scotland? I met that you made the list? No, I'm on the bucket. It's on you're, my bucket list. It is on the bucket list. On Wait, list. hold on. So Isaac and Mike, Mike, you've been you've been there? When did you go? Uh, 2018. I didn't know that. All right. Did you golf? No. Or did you go on a Harry Potter tour? <laughs> <laughs> what did you do? Come on, yeah, tell me. <laughs> See, all these people, who would, who would want to go for Harry Potter? See, exactly, all oh. you. <laughs> you Harry Potter, Jess, you a Harry Potter fan? No. I'm not either. <laughs> Yeah, and but uh, you can go to the little. Did you go to the little cafe where you saw her, where she sat and wrote her first book, and yeah. and and yeah, it's right there on uh, the main street, right it's by really the castle. On it. Uh, no, I haven't. I've seen it. I saw it. I'm like, yeah, I'm that good. Was what his tour was. Okay. So it's a billion dollars. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody knows a lot of facts. Back in 1994. Uh, uh, 1994, so uh, it was uh, May of 1994, when I sat in Stringham Real Estate Schools when everything was done live, and I sat there, and as I was sitting there, I had just come off two things that had happened. Uh, the ex-wife of my brother, our stepbrother, some of you, or, or John knows him, his name is Arthur Art, and uh, she had liquidated all of this little account on this little uh, landscaping company that we had. Now it didn't seem like a lot, but it was $6,000 and it, it, it wouldn't seem like a lot now, but it was everything back then. And she liquidated the account because she was so frustrated by the fact that things were so tight, so tough, so such a struggle. And so just one day she walked in and basically she had access to the account and she cleaned it out and she like wrote bills to, you know, rent payments and her, her utilities. And, and at that moment, I decided that day when I saw that, I said, I'm done. And then I sold this little landscaping company to a person who wanted to, uh, another little company that was doing landscaping because we had all these mowing accounts and everything else. And I was going to the University of Utah and I sold it for $10,000. And uh, when we sold it, that became kind of the seed money to say, okay, well, I think I'm going to go do some, some real estate, Rich. And this week, I had the opportunity to visit with the guy who I had met that when I was mowing lawns, some of you heard this part of the story, but I was mowing lawns and I picked up a particular account. And as I'm mowing these lawns and moving along, you know, this, this uh, blue, shiny, blue sky day, just like today, I'm mowing the lawn and this Lexus LS 400 walks in or drives up into the driveway and I look over and I say, uh, you know, so many words I say, I wonder what they do. And then I remember distinctly right where I was on the lawn, right where, I, in fact, ironically, we ended up buying this property. It was the first property I ever bought. It was a duplex. And uh, I looked at the person getting out and he had, you know, uh, sunglasses on and I looked over at my rusted out 1978 Dodge Ram Charger and I looked back at his Lexus LS 400 which was the hot thing at the moment and he got out of the car and I remember I walked over to the fence and I said to him hey what what do you do and he said oh I'm in real estate and that was kind of all I got I don't usually tell this part of the story I don't tell the part about you know, the, the, the ex-wife of my brother taking all that money out and, you know, not telling anybody. And, and so I had that moment and then the money was stolen. I don't know, maybe a month or two later. I don't, it wasn't a long time later. And, and, or, and, and, and then from that standpoint, I called up, his name is Austin Haywood. Does anybody remember Austin Haywood? Does that ring a bell? I was talking to him this week. He lives in Plano, Texas. And he was trying to present some wheeling and dealing deal to me, like he always is doing. And so 
I called him and I said, it was the best restaurant I knew at the time, and I said, hey, we should go to, can I take you out to lunch or to, to dinner? And he said, well, sure. And so him and Jennifer and, and his wife, we all went to dinner. We went to the training table. Do you remember the training table? Yeah. Do you remember the training table? Yeah. You don't remember the training table, do you? No. Yeah, right. Cheese fries. And then JCW, the guys, the managers there, stole all their recipes and opened up their own little fast food and, and whatnot and did their thing. So anyway, but we went there and I remember I won. I thought, man, there's probably this huge exclusive way to get into real estate. It's got to be, you know, the barrier entry has got to be off the chart. Here's this guy having all these amazing experiences. And, you know, of course, I find out at the time it was 90 hours of continuing ed. And so I'm sitting there. And I'm like, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. And so as I'm sitting in Stringham Real Estate School, I'm sitting at the very, very back. And normally I like to sit at the very, very front. But I'm sitting at the very, very back of the room, and I'm just kind of looking around. And I'll never forget that the instructor, I don't remember who it was, but the instructor asked this question. And they said, how many of you are in this business or looking to get in this business because you had such a bad experience in real estate. And I looked around and a number of people had raised their hands. But as the classes went on, I started to realize something. It was what I realized when I saw what he was doing, meaning Austin Haywood, this agent who was having some success. And I remember saying these words to myself, and that is, and you've heard me probably say this before, some of you, which is, boy, if he can do that, what's so, so can I. And so as I was in that meeting, uh, or in that stream real estate school, I'm, I'm sitting in this real estate school and I'm looking around <clears throat> and I remember looking around going, this is my competition. <laughs> like I remember looking around the room and I, and, and it really, you know, I, I, I was so competitive at that time. I think I probably still have a little bit of competition in me, but, but I was over the chart, you know, over the top, off the chart in regards to my, ability and desire to compete and to crush anything that got in my way and you know I'm going to beat you and everything else and so I'm, I'm sitting in there and I start to realize like most of these people don't know how to sell and so for years I've said oh wow it's great you got your real estate license you figured out how to get a license now you actually have to figure out how to sell and shortly thereafter I started just kind of having my eyes open to the fact that that everything is a sale and everything we do is all about selling and so as i'm sitting there in that in that string of real estate school it dawned on me that the test seemed to be the least important thing that i was going to be doing although the state of utah of course thought it was the most important thing i was going to do it dawned on me really quick it was the least important thing i was going to do and what i realized is that even at that time even though i had just come off an lds mission i you know, I'd been, you know, it's where we're selling religion, if you would say it that way. I mean, I've been communicating with people, doing my thing, and I'd had some successes, if you would say, out there, but it didn't dawn on me that everything is a sale. Whether it was me selling Jennifer on marrying me or selling someone on, you know, where we should go to dinner or what golf course we should play. I mean, every single thing in life is some level and some type of a way of selling. In fact, years later, I came up with the idea that life is nothing more and nothing less than a series of presentations. We're just constantly presenting, whether it's presenting to a child, presenting to a spouse, a, you know, a friend, a client. We're presenting, we're selling. And so <clears throat> at the same time, I was going to the University of Utah, and as I was going, it con I concluded is to and I can relate to this because my son recently said this, Ethan, talked about how he much he disliked school. And I remember as he said that, I was thinking this was, this kind of brought up this story. As he said that, it dawned on me how much I didn't like school. And so while I was going to school and realizing how much I didn't like it, I came to the conclusion that I needed to still learn how to sell. And so shortly thereafter, as I got my license and I have to tell you, I, I was still going to school, but finally I just said, I'm not, I'm not doing the, the, the going to the U. I'm, I'm, I'm done. And to this day, I'll sit in meetings and I'll be going over financials and, you know, people might have seen or they looked up something on LinkedIn or Facebook and saw that I had attended the U and they'll say, hey, so, you know, when did you graduate or, 
you know, what was your degree in? And I'll say, I, 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 I didn't. And, and yet, when it comes to like financials and different things like that, is I, I, I just became obsessed with learning the process of selling and really the language of finance. And so although I can think big and I can do different things and I can assess, you know, lots of different angles of business, it was back in my early 20s when I concluded on the idea that I needed to really figure out how to sell. And so the challenge is, is that we'll look at markets like this and we'll get agitated by markets. But my observation is, is that the people who are not, who are not agitated by the market are usually the people who have really figured out how to sell. And they have figured out how to communicate at such a high level that it doesn't matter what's actually going on and they have success despite it, no matter what, because of it. And, and so for, for me, when I was basically, what, I've been 20, I was 22 years old, when I did, or 20, 20, 23 years old I would have been, that I determined that I was gonna dedicate my life to figuring out how to sell. And so I started to piece together, for me, a story that made some level of sense. And what I've observed, and I think that I'm sure there's some of you in this room, but I look at how much it costs. Here's a good example. To take and to put uh, Ashley, specifically my daughter, through UCLA specifically, it costs for room, board, tuition, out-of-state tuition. At the end of the day, it was $387,000 is what it cost to put her through school. And I paid all of it. She didn't pay any of it, Aubrey. I paid all of it. Um, and I say that to you that if it wasn't for the fact that, of course, she's going on to get, become a doctor and do her thing, I don't know if I would ever be willing to do that. And I think that as I've looked at it, I look at a lot of people who have a degree. And it's not that it was a bad thing they got a degree, but so often people aren't using the very degree that they actually got. And so for me, when I was 23 years old, I made this very conscious decision, Dayton. It was this. I will master how to sell. And I will do everything that it takes to figure that out. And there were days where I would have multiple coaches, two, three coaching sessions with two, three different types of coaches a week. And I realized that if I was willing to spend, like, let's just say the U, you know, eighty dollars to $100,000 now to, to go to the U, I was going to take that same amount of money and invest in my future as if I was going to get a PhD in salesmanship. And what I watch is so many people who forget and they forget that they're building a business and they forget that they're building something that is going to hopefully last even the test of time and that they don't realize, and they, but yet they would for a formal and what I would consider a, uh, a traditional education, they think, oh, well, that's fine that I'll put that money towards that, but they won't put money towards building their future. They won't put money towards building their business. They won't pay the price and pay the cost of what it would take to educate themselves to become masters of this business. Now, some of you have. I'm not, I mean, I'm looking around this room, and I know some of you certainly have, have done that and continue to do that. But I just want to point out that if your income, no matter where it is, is stagnant, there is probably an issue with the way you're thinking and the things you're doing or the person that you are to this point because you are either growing or dying. And if you are stationary with the same income, I would challenge you on the fact that then there is a problem with either your thinking, there is a problem with the way you are moving your business because it should always be growing, always. I don't care whether it's a team, I don't care whether you're an individual, a partnership, you're on your own, it should be growing. And so much of that has to do with the decision that you make in relationship to who you choose to become in regards to sales, business, and you name it. So I go back to my early 20s. And then I go back to my early to late 20s and early 30s. I became so obsessed with wanting to know the answers to things that I would like go every week, I would go with Matt McCleary, if you know him, he's a, an accountant down in, uh, I believe in, in American Ford, King and McCleary. And every week I would go to lunch with Matt, Matt and I said, can I just take you to lunch? And every week we would pull out financials and tax returns and P&Ls and profit and loss 
and income statements and balance sheets. And those things were foreign subjects to me. But today I can sit in a, in a boardroom with people and I can absolutely annihilate people. Not because I'm trying to annihilate them, but because you better speak not only the truth, but you better make sense. Yesterday I was with an IRS agent for two hours and 15, or actually to be exact, 16 minutes. It was painfully tough. And all it was is I had an identity theft because somehow Jennifer's social security number got put in wrong and it started this series of problems during COVID. And, and I actually found out, hey, the best part is I found out yesterday is the IRS, Sean, owes me $207,000. That's a good thing. That's, that's pretty awesome, man. Yeah, since 2018. I've never heard of that. $207,000. It was 70 more thousand dollars than I thought it was going to be, actually. But they will not stamp my 2018 returns because there was a miss, uh, a wrong, uh, so it was like, it literally was like, where did you bank in 2019? Where did you go and travel to in 2017? You know, it was the most bizarre thing. It went on and on and on. In fact, Jennifer, after it was done, she goes, I feel like we just had an FBI investigation. I said, yeah, kind of. Yeah. And after it was all said, and the IRS agent, in all fairness, was such a sweetheart. She was so kind. I was like, oh. And even my attorney goes, this is one of the good people. And she was. She's been there for 30 years. Um, but wait, talk about a mixed up, messed up system. It is crazy right now at the IRS. They are so far behind. But my 2018 taxes, because it's past statute, they can't be reviewed. They can't be audited. They can't be changed. They have to accept what I sent in. And so they have to rubber stamp it. And they keep not wanting to rubber stamp it because of this fraud alert that came up. In, or sorry, identity fraud alert that came up. So I'm, I'm dealing with that. But my point is, that while they were going through the taxes, because I know taxes so well, that I was able to go through them and analyze them and speak intelligently to them. So if you're in the world of business, can you speak intelligently in the world of finance? Because you're in business. And although you are a salesperson, you're still in business. Because you're building a business. The other thing I would ask you is, are you really as good of a salesperson as you think you are? Are you really as good as you think you are? Or are you, again, waiting for the markets, waiting for changes? And it's not that we don't benefit. All of us benefit. I benefit when markets are easier. I get that. But have you really committed to being an extraordinary salesperson? People want better leads. I mean, I'm sure. Dave, have you ever had you say on your team, I want better leads? Exactly. But the problem is, is that the challenge, and Dave knows this, we're Dave for how many years are we going on now? 17 years, and by the way, I have read your what you sent me so many times. That was so fun. And I have yet to read it because I, I read part of it to him. I said, guess who that person is? And it was, and it was a, a, she sent me some journal entries of like, what, how many years? Oh, wait, so how many years ago is that? 16 years ago, she sent me some journal entries of what she was going through. And they were rough moments. And no one would ever dawn on thinking that she's having those types of moments. But the fact is, is that, when you don't get committed, and I watched, you read, you gosh, you can read her journal, and she's regulating herself, her emotions, her mindset. She's challenging herself. She's saying, "Hey, I was this. I was feeling this way. Now I'm going to feel this way." I mean, that that's that's the process of not only selling yourself. So as you as you guys have just move through your career, and you know, you, you start looking at it, you start realizing, like, man, well, again, I go back to you, like, what are you committed to? So, Joel, when, again, when I was 22 years or 23 years old, I made this solid commitment. I will get a PhD in selling. Selling. You've got to be able to say the word if you can't commit to it, <laughs> right? But you've got to be able to sell. You've got to be able to persuade. You've got to be able to influence. And you've got to be able to, when someone says no, is it possible to get a yes? And the thing is, if you can't do that in this business, you're going to have a really big challenge. And then you will look outside of you for, well, the leads aren't good. The market's not good. The rates are the problem. When that's not the problem at all. At all. Just today, I was prospecting with an agent, Justin Crane, and it took one call to go, whoa, 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 hold on. And he's a talented guy. Like, he is a talented dude. And I said, hold on. Like, why did you just hang up on that call? And which is what I want to talk about in a second. We're going to not the call, but we're going to talk about it. 
And it was the fact that there was not anywhere near enough depth into the conversation. So just maybe some questions to ask yourself, like, are you committed to being a great salesperson? Are you committed to understanding the language of business? Are you committed that wherever your business is, can it grow economically? I get the fact that the cheese can move and that the models of business can change, but how do you choose to earn money? Right? I, how do you, uh, people used to get, not as much, I don't hear it as much, but for a minute I did it. Well, why, why is George creating a title company? Well, why, is the, why, why does he need a, 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 a lending company? Well, because if you haven't figured out that everything's changing, it doesn't take much to figure out that even just even this NAR lawsuit is changing some things. But I'm committed into becoming more. I'm committed to expanding. I'm committed to making sure I always have a certain amount of revenue and it's always growing. Always. And the problem I continually see with individuals is that they get set and then they stop growing. And if you have stopped growing, you have got to start growing because you can't stop. It is a lifelong pursuit. You're never going to get off the hook unless you just want to be complacent, unless you just want to get by, unless you want to just exist, unless you just want to just sit around and do nothing, then maybe that will be the case. But there should be some challenge anywhere in your life. And I get the fact it doesn't have to always be economic. I can live with that. But man, you got to be growing. Because if you stop growing, you stop the process of happiness. You stop the process of expansion. And you're built to have goals. You're built to expand. You're built to grow. You're built to become more. And if you're settling in on the idea that you can't be or don't want to be or, you know, you're fine with what you have, man, something's missing. Something, something is missing. And again, it doesn't have to always be economic. I can live with that. But man, you should be stretching. Man, you should be growing. And you might even say, well, I'm really tired. I get it. By the way, tired people, it only happens when they're not chasing their dreams. People are only tired when they're not chasing their dreams. I'm exhausted. I'm burnt out. I Only when you're not chasing your dreams. You don't hear the person who go, the person who's chasing their dreams doesn't count the clock. The person who's chasing their dreams doesn't worry about how, how much time they put in. They don't worry about how exhausted they are. They don't get there and go, okay, did I get a certain amount of sleep? Did I get a certain amount of this? They're, they're not, did I, did I, did I, did I, did, oh, whoa, 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 I didn't get lunch. They're not worried whether they ate. When you're chasing your dreams, you're not tired, you're not hungry, you're not, you're, you're focused in such a different way when you're chasing your dreams. You're not worried about, well, I, I, I couldn't make it. I, I didn't get enough sleep today. Well, that means you must not be chasing anything that means anything to you. Because I can tell you one thing. I average, I was telling the, another, in another meeting I was in, I average no more. I looked at my Garmin watch that I wear when I'm doing a lot of golfing. I never got more than six and a half hours of sleep for the 11 days I was on this trip. But do you think I said, Shauna, I'm sorry, I cannot get up to play Muirfield. And you don't even, you don't, do you know what Muirfield is? It's a golf course. It is an amazing <laughs> golf course. But I, the day before, got four hours. I know exactly what it, four hours and 12 minutes of golf. <laughs> oh, sorry, of golf. Four hours and 12 minutes of sleep. I was like, wait a second. Are you getting is there, it, golf? I, I, think, I want you to think about something. <laughs> Joel, what's your favorite thing to do besides sell real estate, of course, right? Just kidding. What's your favorite thing to do? The gym. Gym. Okay. Do, do you go to the gym even if you're tired? Yeah. Do you like it that much? Yeah. Okay. How do you like fishing? You ever too tired to fish? No. Isn't that fascinating? But we sure get tired when it's like we're Because the moment you forget to connect the dots to what you want, to what you're doing, you start getting tired, sleepy, negotiate away your dreams, because that's what we all, we all do it. We all do it. So again, if you can't connect the dots between your dreams and your activities, then you are just doing a job. But if you can connect the dots between a dream and your activity, then you start being that person where you meet and they go, oh, wow, they move with such passion, such energy, such force, such passion that drives everything that they do. But when you walk around scared, when you walk around timid, when you walk around trying to, you know, 
not exhaust yourself, don't spend yourself, don't or expend yourself, then you're working from a whole different place of energy. And we all do it. I've gotten stuck in those moments. But when I get out of it, I start to realize, whoa, hold on a second here. I was so far away from what I really wanted and then what I was doing, they never they weren't connecting. But the moment they connect, it doesn't matter how much sleep I get. Like last night, I woke up every hour. Literally, every hour, Joanna. Every hour I woke up because I was so excited for today. You say, well, why? I'm not quite sure. I was just really excited. And no, it wasn't, I wasn't anxious. I was excited. And there's a thin, thin line, by the way, between anxiousness and excitement. But I mean, the fact is, I was just excited. So I kept looking at my watch, kept looking at my watch. Probably a little bit jet lag and whatnot, but I didn't wake up. I didn't really sleep all night. Do I look tired, Aubrey? Do I? I don't know. Maybe I do. I don't feel tired. And even if I feel tired. And there's times I've walked in where I probably look tired, but I'm still here because it's what I want. Because my dreams and my actions are going to connect. And the moment, let me tell you something, the moment you disconnect, your, what you desire, what you want, your purpose, your goals, what drives you, when you are disconnected, you will negotiate away all sorts of actions, prospecting, making the tough calls, calling the people, practicing, prospecting, you know, stuff with your mindset, what you listen to, what you read. It will all get all renegotiated because the one thing we forget is where we're going and why we're doing what we do. When we remember that, we will do anything to get it. Hence, just remember, take your favorite thing you love to do, and I guarantee you, you will do it despite whether you're tired or whether you're, you know, you, you have a tummy ache or you don't feel right. Do you, Jeremy, would you, would you golf with a tummy ache? Yep. Would, would, would you golf with a hangnail? Would yes. you golf if you even threw out the night before? Would you golf if you, if you, would you, if you knew you were going to play a, a, any great course and you threw up the night before, would you golf still? Absolutely. Would you pro now here's the bigger question. Would you prospect? You'd call, if people would call me, I could not have thrown up all night. You say, well, that's a pretty good excuse. I know, is it? I don't know. Maybe it is. But I would just challenge you that when you're disconnected to what you really desire, you won't pay the price. Can you be exhausted, Jessica, and still play pickleball? What's your favorite thing to do, Aaron? The gym would be something I do and I do every day, but it's not, I don't have, it's not a favorite. Well, what's your favorite thing? That doesn't mean you're doing it a lot. What's your favorite thing? Is it the outdoors? Is it, not, you, you don't know what your favorite thing to do is? I don't know. Spend time with people. Well, that's okay. Yeah. What does that mean? Like, what do you mean spend time with people? Uh, in conversation, life stuff. Okay. Okay. So you could be with people no matter how tired you are. Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite thing to do, really? ATV ride, go to my cabin, hang out with friends. Are you ever too tired to go on an ATV ride? I just, want you, I, I, just, I just want you to give perspective to this, right? You need to figure out what you love to do. I know. <laughs> That's a whole other conversation we're going to have one day. I've been thinking about this for a while, actually. I don't, I don't have that. I bet you do, but you just don't know it. That would be my argument, but okay. Dave, what's your favorite thing to do besides, well, I know you love business, don't you? Uh, I do love business, yeah. Do you, does it matter how tired you are? Yeah, how, how, actually, of all the people I know who are the most angry and irritated by COVID, Dave takes the trophy. <laughs> he was so agitated. Do you remember, I remember standing in the lobby on the sixth floor with you, and you were so ticked off about it because it was preventing him from doing what he what? Loves. Do not let him off the hook, making him say, I love business. I love what do you love, Dave? I love oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know he loves business. I can name other things. I love no, I'm I know he does. Him. I know he does. Doesn't matter how he does. You, lo you love to play some uh, Texas Hold'em, right? Play could you, could you, could you stay up all night? Yes. Exactly. My point is, yes. <laughs> right? My, but, but that's my point. So just again, perspective. You can always do what you love to do because there's a purpose, a meaning, and a passion, and an energy to, for it. So just connect the dots. Somehow can you weave 
the prospecting, the door knocking, the practicing, to mean so much that you're willing to do it no matter what because of what it means to you and what you get in the future. And man, if you can do that, man, everything, everything you want will come true. Any thoughts, comments to that? Mr. Syed, you're back there writing like a madman. Any ahas? Well, you know, it sounds really simple, but I think Aaron's a really good example of that. I mean, it's, I don't know that many people are really connected with what they've already done. I, don't, I think that oftentimes they'll say they, they understand it, but I, I would ask the question, when was the last time you did that? You know, my favorite thing to do is to go off-roading. I love to go down to Moab. I love to go up into the mountains in the LaSalle's and go fishing. And it's been a while. And I think that when you take the time to actually do it, you get reconnected to it, then it reinvigorates you. And you, to your point, you have a hard time sleeping. You want to come back and you want to do those things that maybe sometimes we're disconnected from and that we don't really like to do when we lose focus. So, yeah, I think it's 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 easy to, to comprehend it. It's a lot harder to actually do it. It is. It is. John, one of my favorite stories I was seeing, some of you, you I know some of you, remember him? Jessica, you remember Greg Davis? Remember Greg Davis? You remember Greg Davis, right, Dave? Okay. Greg Davis is my favorite story because he came in and told me that Chad Wagstaff can't make it in real estate, Brenda Lee. And I was just telling the story to, I guess, one of his childhood friends yesterday in the lobby. And it's my favorite story of someone telling someone they can't make it and they're not going to make it. And he's killing it. Exactly, right? But um, where was I going with this? One of your favorite stories. Greg Davis. Yes, Greg sorry, Davis. Greg Davis. Coming into my office, and he says to me, he, 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 he lays out the most amazing plan, Rich. Like, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. It's the beginning of the year. And he is absolutely on fire. Like, economically, it's happened. This is 20 years ago, probably. And then somewhere around, I'm going to say March, April, May-ish, he is doing so well. But I will never forget the number. He came in and he said he wanted to earn $200,000. This is the beginning of the year. He was on, and, and, and mind you, he had just the year before was doing extra money activities. And I remember when I met him for the first time, he had to go because he had a landscaping job to rake leaves. It was the, it was the, it was the fall. And his goal was $200,000. He was on track give or take, for about $120,000. Again, this is like 20 years ago. And as he sat there, he told me, Ruby, about how great his life was. He was telling me about traveling here and doing this, and they adopted a new baby, and blah, blah, blah. And I mean, it was like, wow. And I said to him, and he was on track for 120, I said, well, it sounds like to me you've got everything that you want. And he said, well, what do you mean? I said, oh, there's no way you're going to go earn $200,000 because you have everything you want at $120,000. He's like, and he, he got really spirited. Like he got really ticked off at me. It's probably a little less tactful <laughs> back in those days. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't very tactful last night either. Was I Isaac? Was that a no? no. <laughs> just check it. Okay. Just check it. But, but I, I, I mean, I, I just, I go, you will not earn 200 grand. I just was kind of like a call. I'm like, I know you won't. Why do you say that? I go, because you have everything you want at 120. And here's the problem where I often see with agents. They have the life that they always thought. The question is, could there be more? And the challenge is, is that he was so mad. And then a few days later, he came back in and just kind of, you know, walked him out. He says, do you know how upset I am still at you? I said, Okay. I said, but I'm just calling a spade a spade. I said, you he told me how amazing your life is at 120 and everything you've ever won is coming true. So I have no idea why you would go earn 200 grand. So then he reworked it and revisited and got connected to other things. And then all of a sudden he did, he did earn 200 grand that year. It was a huge deal for him. Like it was a massive mental, emotional breakthrough, but it's the principle. Some of you have settled, and there's a lot of producers in this room, but some of you have settled at a certain income and that you're kind of okay with it. It doesn't mean you have to sacrifice the quality of your life for that, 
But I would just challenge you on the idea, why are you not making more money? Why have you not figured out other angles to earn a tremendous amount of more money? Is there not other ways to do that that may not constrict your quality of life, but could you earn more money? Could you have more success? But the only way you'll do that, whether it's 200 or 2 million, whatever it is, is that you have to know why it is that you want it. And then you, your brain will take over and your emotions and your reticular activator and everything. And you'll start finding ways to get what you, it is that you want. And it, yes, you can have rules around it. You can have ways around it. I've got two hands, but so you and then, so yeah. Jeremy and then Jess. Yeah, just on that note, I, I think you said something similar in the past about like, getting tired, right, you're not chasing your dreams, and something about, like, well, we sometimes we lose our creativity as well. Oh, yeah. When we're, when we're in that. When we lack commitment. And I'm thinking about an agent that I, I met with in the past. Many of you know this person. And I remember sitting with him, and he was kind of in a constant funk. And I sat with him, and he was like, I just need help. I need to figure it out. And, and I asked him, well, what's going on? He says, I have everything I want. I get to do this. I travel with my family to Japan X number of times a year. I do this. And he started naming these things. And I just asked him one question, and it was, how awesome would it be to fly your entire family first class to Japan? And you could see his entire demeanor and change of like, and that doesn't seem like that intelligent of an idea uh, from the standpoint of like so hard to reach and think about. But he lost all creativity. And, and no drive to think of what could I do? What more could I want out of life? And also it's like, that would be a game changer in my life if we could all fly in first class. And, and it was interesting. Right, kind of that's, that's spot on. It's exactly the point, is the creativity, the connection to a higher and greater self or experience on this earth. Absolutely. Half of my drive for me, Jeremy, is I just want to find out what's possible. It is, a, it is a constant question inside of me as to what is possible for me. It's a driving force. Like I, sometimes when I've been in a coaching session, I'm like, aren't you just curious what could happen? Like what you could do, who you could become, what you could achieve, what could be? Are you curious of what's possible? So, Jess. Yeah, I, was say, I think there's a ton of truth to this because I think you make three, four, five hundred grand a year net and you take it home, your lifestyle, you're doing what you want to do. You're saving a ton of money. You know, making a million plus is not going to change the way you travel. It may change it if you're making significantly more. Yeah, you could have a jet, things like right. that. You could not, you could privately fly. That's the biggest difference I see. But it's the amount of money that you can save a year. And so it, it is, it's tricky because it doesn't change your lifestyle that much once you're making a certain amount of money. Yeah. And so I do think you have to find another drive, another why of what the reasons why it's going to take you to that next level because it will not change your lifestyle unless you go really big. Yeah, yeah. And there's the lifestyle, but right? I, I will never forget when I heard someone say, someone, why don't you go make more money? And they go, well, I don't really want to make more money. And they said, well, what if you made more money and you gave it all away? And they literally paused and they had never thought like, Oh wait, what if what if I did make more money and I gave it all away? What if I made a bigger difference and a bigger mark? And look, whether whether here, here's my, my thought. You can either work from a place of eternal perspective and knowing that your existence will go beyond, or you can also work from where you can work from a space where you left your mark and you left something greater and better off because you showed up. So somewhere in between there seems to be some answers for a lot of people. And I, I, in my world, I love working from both. I love to get to see who I'm becoming because I like to believe that I'm taking that with me. But I also like to believe like, man, what am I leaving behind? What is my legacy? My intensity, even on my own children, is on the basis of the fact of who they choose to become because they are who I leave behind. They will be who I leave behind. So just remember that, man, connecting those dots, it, and yes, to your point, it could be travel or how the condition, but man, there could be so many other ways that could drive you so that every single day is a purposeful life. And the challenge that I watch with so many people is that they're walking and wandering through life. The person I was with yesterday, you don't know who they are, and they said, oh, you're so much, 
younger than me. And what was funny is I said, well, how old are you? And this was a girl, lady. And she said, 55. I said, how old do you think I am? And she says, you're probably like, what, 43, 44? I'm like, yes. And I'm like, no, not even close. I go, why do you think that? And I, and this is, again, what's kind of triggered a little bit of this conversation today. She said, well, you still have so much passion. Most people our age don't have much of that. And that goes back to the Ben Franklin statement. I may misquote it, and others have quoted it too. Steve Forey used to quote it, but it's a quote by Ben Franklin who said, most people die at 40 and are buried at 80. Just think about that for a minute. Most people die at 40 and are buried at 80. You look up the exact quote from Ben Franklin, but it's something like that. And that has sat with me when I was in my early 20s, the first time I heard it, I go, that will not be me. People go, no, no, you don't understand. You're going to really want to slow down. And I'm like, no, I really want to speed up here. And so many people buy into the idea. Man, you're, I, I, I have always appreciated the statement of, uh, I'm going to have to say it one or two times to get it right, but I have always appreciated the statement of, of Tony Robbins and that is, is that your soul has no age. And, and um, man, that, that has resonated with me that, okay, if, if internally my mind, my thoughts, my energies have nothing to do with my age and my physical body, then how old do I choose to act? Actually, just like Ashley yesterday, she goes, if anyone knew how immature you were, great. <laughs> And I was getting after Isaac, Dave. I was getting after Isaac. And she said, you wouldn't say that to any agent. I said, actually, you wouldn't be, you might be surprised. I just might. More so, the new and improved George may not. But a few years ago, he would have. Right? But, but my, my, my point is, is that, you know, get, get, get connected. Go ahead. Just a thought, you know, something that I, I've done in my career I think it's helped too, because I, I do think there is an area of the business that I think that we some people like and don't like, you know, you know, and I think it's okay also to, to take a step back if you've been doing it for a while and you feel a little exhausted. I, I think absolutely you have to make sure that you have a vision where you're going and what you're doing it for, especially when your quality of life is hitting a certain point. I think Jessica's spot on. There isn't a difference between five hundred and a million dollars in our quality of life. You know, I've made over a right. million dollars multiple years, and it's not any different than it was when I was making three or four hundred thousand dollars. So, in order for you to keep putting that kind of work in, you have to have something that's driving you. But another little hack that I, I've been able to do is is really take a moment and look at the business, look at all the things that are required to do the business, and focus on the things that you love and make that your your main focus in your life, and make your career off of that. And the things that you despise, because there's a lot of things in this business that I absolutely despise. Totally. Absolutely. Anyone knows me, I, you, will never in, you will never see me at an open house. I will never sit there, I, I despise it. Not to say that there's people that love open houses, but I will never be there. Anytime I drive by on a Saturday and I see an open house sign, my wife always knows. So I say, sucker, you know, it's <laughs> just not my thing. You know, and so I, I will never do an open house. And if I, my client requires it, I will pay heavily for one, well, another agent to do an open house for yeah. But there's areas that I absolutely love that other agents don't like at all. I love coaching. I can, I can spend all day long with an agent and encouraging and coaching and adjusting and, and helping their mindset. So I can speed it all day long. That's where my career is good, is I've made that my focus and that's where I make my revenue. You know, that's so I figured yes. out how to do it within that. So if you're in a lull and you've been doing this for a while, you know, and you don't have the easy hack of like, oh, I want to get the new car. Once that's that's done and you're past that, I would just say, you know, agents that are a little bit more seasoned, take a moment and analyze the business, leverage the things that you absolutely don't like, and make the, the things that you do enjoy in the business your main focus. Love it. Spot on. Spot on. All right, guys, I think we're probably, yeah, we are. It is, it is the Cinderella hour. Okay, any other last thoughts? I... I I still didn't, you know what's kind of interesting, Dave? I didn't get to anything I was really going to talk about yet. Wow. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. But we said a lot, didn't we? Yeah. Yep. What's your, what's your takeaway? Um, the, you're the representative of the youth, the rising generation. What's your takeaway? I want to keep learning and investing in my business and my relationships and 
like do what I love. Just talk to people. Yeah. Are you going to college? I don't care what your answer is. Probably not. Right. So. Dayton, you going to college? No. Isaac, are you going to college? You going to? No. I just I don't I don't know. <laughs> Dave, maybe change his mind. <laughs> no. Who's young enough? You guys are. Uh, how old are you, Arvana? Twenty-one. Are you? Tw you're only twenty-one. Yeah. Are you going to college? No. Okay. Ashlyn, are you still in your twenties? You look like it. Just well, so you thank know. Thank you. You going to college? <laughs> or did, you, did you already go to college? No. Well, I went to college for a few years. All right. I'm not all right. All right. All these old guys. Wait. Well, how old are you? George, we're not old. Okay. Not <laughs> old. <laughs> You're 22. Yeah. You going to college? Okay. So here's my statement to you. Do everything you can within your life, especially all you young guys and gals in here. Do everything you can to master the ability to sell. And for all of the, this, this season, as we are not old, but as we is get connected to what is driving you every day and let it be something that you absolutely make sure you're connected to so that whether it's, again, giving away your money, maybe it's a foundation, maybe it's helping a family member, maybe it's places you want to go, ways you want to travel, people you want to help, individuals who... Would like what? How are you going to leave your mark here? Because guys, when you can prospect and you can knock doors and you can work long or late or early or whatever it is for you, and you can connect the dots, you will be driven to not coming into this building as an example, looking for a way to escape it. But you'll be in here because you will be fully here, knowing that your life is about to change for so much good for everything that you do when you are in here. So just remember that, like, like the future is so bright. There are so many ways to earn money in this business. There are so many angles to this business, so many different models, which I'm so excited about our, our summit coming forward. We have all these different models as to way you could do your business that we're really going to talk about and different angles, the way you could do it. But the fact is, is that there's so many ways that you can do it. So go do it. And figure out the way to connect to like what you ultimately want and the dreams that you have and the actions that you have to take and integrate those two. And in fairness, you'd be known as a person of integrity. Here's your dreams. Here's your actions. They match. And that is one, one beautiful place to be. And I haven't always been there. I'm not even here to tell. I'm never, I will never champion the fact, oh, I've always been there. I haven't. But I've never lost sight of trying to get it lined up. And that I have never lost. I have always wanted to be rich, but there are moments when I have been so poor that I did not know how I was going to feed my family. And that is a fact. That is, that gives me chills to say it, and I could be, weep with tears of how painful it was when it happened. And it didn't just happen once, just so you know. It happened a number of times. So as you move through your career and your life, just connect the dots to what you want and figure out what you have to do to get it. But don't ever get exhausted in that process. Don't ever give up on that. Because there is a tremendous power when you are growing in that way. Okay? Love you guys. Thank you for everything. Thank you for all that you guys do. And thank you for being here and supporting me. So thank you. All right, guys. Yeah, I'm here if you have any questions. All right, Ms. Williams, go take it. Yes, the world by storm. So, thanks. Okay. You're doing really good. Really? Yeah. Had a great trip, got back, and making it happen. Holy cow. Dolphins. Your shoes are a little Scotland. Ireland last year, though. And Scotland. But Scotland. Uh, I went to Ireland. Yes. Yep. Well, right after. Right after. Right after. And they're like, you're leaving after one, three weeks? I said, yes, I am. <laughs> and guess what? I'll see him when I'm back. <laughs> and he'll still be here. Because and he was. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So it's my How's your son? Oh, wow. You look great, by the way. You doing good? Yeah, yeah, almost didn't so recognize it. Good, good to see you, buddy. How are you doing? Yeah. 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 Hey, are you? Are you?